itagat kora jita kwa lenti den kas tv en ngalalet nota negitinye en betut nota nebo raini na libo kas tv gimitong bata egud owalom en let ko yudie deputy secretary general en policy and strategy en yaet nota nebo pandaptai en sergalit nebo kenya kwanza nitang ngalal nago ba nitang go bottom up economic agenda gila to sune agenda ago kisuldoita en oreta non tarita ite nan go mukulima itinye biashara nata ne mingin entrepreneur en lambaga imi mi ngalaga pa sms sms nitango en yaet nata ne ba amungaro sekche mengechin go tarita ite nan go rangalaga bottom up welcome back to david mr elid owalo and um during campaign yes. you know we talk we talk about the first 100 days yes. uh, the promise yes uh how far i think uh, i remember um, when uh, deputy president had um, uh, an interview with one of the tv station yes and he said you know you can't judge us we are only five days old uh, i think today is around <laughs> eight or nine or <laughs> ten days old but if you look i know there's still the issue of cabinet you know uh, not uh, constituted you know so that um Maybe we start a count from there, but so far, you know, um, when you want to travel, you start by planning. You know, itavai ngo, itavai ile, you know, ntamuka sanga vikesho. So, how are the plans so far? You see, some of those yes. promises which we mm. made during the campaign uh, did not really need uh, some major policy mm -hmm. uh, reviews, yeah, but they just that. needed uh, mm -hmm. decisive action by leadership. Mm -hmm. For example, there was the issue of the judges, yeah, mm -hmm. who were recommended to the president by the Judicial Service Commission, but the president, the, 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 appoint, the yeah. former president did not appoint. Mm -hmm. That has already been done, yeah. and they have been sworn in, so that is a tick. Two, there's the issue of independence of our institutions, which are charged with the responsibility of ensuring uh, that there's zero tolerance to corruption. Mm -hmm. For a beginning, uh, the National Police Service has already been given financial autonomy mm -hmm. by way of uh, an executive uh, order by the president uh, that now the inspector general of police is going to be an accounting officer, mm -hmm. an AIE holder. Yeah, 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 so yeah, they'll yeah. be having their own resources as opposed to the hitherto situation where they were relying uh, on, 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 on the office of the president for purposes of what? Mm -hmm. Of funding. Which means now they can identify their own programs based on their functional mandate, uh, fund uh, um, the, the, the programs align, align, align the resources to the programs that they want to implement without uh, undue influence from the office of the what mm -hmm. president. That president. will give the yeah. And the president has also said that we are going to ensure that other independent institutions like the EACC, the office of the auditor general, will get adequate funding so that they are strengthened. Mm -hmm. And then these institutions will also be depoliticized. Yeah, we have been having a lot of political influence uh, in the affairs of these commissions, yet from the executive. Yet they are supposed to be what? Independent what? Mm -hmm. Commissions as per the constitution. That political interference is not going to be there anymore. We will, the government, the Kenya Kwanzaa government will allow independent commissions mm -hmm. to execute their mandate without uh, reference to the executive. The executive. The issue of the judiciary fund, again, that one already has been, uh, a proclamation has been made to that effect because it is in the constitution that the judiciary needs to be, uh, adequate funding needs to go to the judiciary so that we have got impartial mm -hmm. discharge of our judicial, uh, within our judicial uh, framework. You see, uh, the three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary are supposed to be independent of each other, yet complementary. Mm -hmm. But we have been having a situation where there has been certain instances of the executive interfering in the affairs of the other two, two, two arms of what? Yeah. Two arms of government. Exactly. That will be a thing of the past. The president has made it very clear that the legislature and the judiciary will be truly independent mm -hmm. and they will provide, they execute their mandates without um, interference from the, from the executive. Mm -hmm. The other issue was the issue of the CBC, a yeah, task CBC, force yeah. is yeah. already being constituted to look at issues in the education sector issues touching on CBC, issues touching on the, the, the shortage of teachers, issues to do with the challenges and emerging issues within our institutions of higher learning and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The issue of 
salaries and remuneration to the police that again will be addressed in liaison with the National Police uh, Service Commission on one hand and also the Salary Review Commission on the other. Mm -hmm. As we speak, the SRC is already uh, embarked on a process of a job evaluation mm -hmm. exercise for the entire civil service that would ensure that our civil jobs in the civil service are, our, are rewarded to a level with commensurate with their contributing component. Mm -hmm. We will reward the jobs to a level based on what value they are giving to the what to the to the service by by way of delivery. Mm -hmm. And we will also ensure that those salaries within the civil service are not just internally equitable but also externally competitive, mm -hmm. benchmarked with prevailing market what market rates with a view to enhancing uh, motivation of staff within the civil service so that we can have some increase in the level of efficiency and effectiveness by way of service what service provision mm -hmm. so most of these uh, promises which were made to be delivered within the first 100 days they are either been done or they are work in progress mm -hmm. yeah it's a work in uh, progress eh? yeah and um there, there's a question I posted that you'll be coming to the show. Yes. And uh, mostly, I've seen several guys asking about the same. Yes. The issue of Mamambogas. Yes. Like the guys down there. Yes, the guys, at the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah, the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. They are asking, like, will or can our lives change in 100 days? Or what are the plans the government You see, is? we have got the 50 yes. billion Hustler Fund. Hustler Fund, yes. The yeah. Uh, this, fu this fund will be operationalized soon. Mm -hmm. And w the framework for implementation would ensure that this money reaches the common one inch down there, mm -hmm. the itinerary traders, or the youth who are involved in small, small businesses mm -hmm. at the bottom of the pyramid. We are going to roll out this fund through an elaborate infrastructure that goes down all the way to the polling station. Mm -hmm. How will this happen? The same way we vote around the polling station, we will use the infrastructure that will be put in place. We are going to establish a special purpose vehicle to roll out this fund. And we will start by identifying the potentials of the people around the polling station so that we determine by way of comparative advantage what are the opportunities the youth can get involved in, what are the opportunities the women, our mothers and sisters can get involved mm -hmm. in. Once that is done, we will have an arm of that service delivery vehicle getting involved in entrepreneurial training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. basic business skills. How do you run the business? How do you development de develop business plans? How do you monitor or track your the performance of your business and so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? We are doing this because we don't just want to give out money. But we also want to ensure that once the money is given to the youth and our, our mothers and sisters, they are able to embark on their businesses in a sustainable manner mm -hmm. by being equipped with the relevant what? The skills. Skill. Yeah, skill. Now, this money will be available at below the prevailing market rates because the greatest challenge that we have been having at the level of itinerary trade is access to what? Mm -hmm. Access to credit. Mm -hmm. So it will be at very, 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 very minimal, minimal um, uh, rates uh, rates by way of interest so that th the businesses are able not just to pay back but are also able to roll out the, 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 their ventures in a sustainable in a sustainable manner mm -hmm. so yes this is being rolled out and in due course we will have money available at the bottom of the pyramid uh, at the disposal of the youth and our mothers and sisters at the grassroots level yeah, absolutely yeah there is um as okay a comment or um like a view. Yes. Uh, I've seen several guys say thank you so much, Elliot, for coming through yes. the show. Then there is, uh, let me just uh, read one from uh, Richard Kibet. Uh, he says he's a driver uh, in Kericho. Yes. And I'll paraphrase so that uh, because I've seen similar, uh, almost similar question on the issue of uh, fuel. He's saying, uh, can you, uh, could you ask uh, Elliot if uh, what he thinks? Uh, okay, the way they are thinking themselves, they are, uh, they are giving their view. Like, uh, Suppose we scrap off um, some of the taxes on fuel. Uh, is that saying like, will the price go down? And what will be the position of the government on that? We've yes. said uh, fuel is a, there's a global, there are other factors, you know, globally. Yes. Because we import. Yes. So they are saying, uh, there are almost five or six guys asking the same thing, like, we reduce on 
some of the taxes. You, I, I, yeah. I understand this uh, concern about fuel. You see, mm -hmm. um, oil contributes in several sectors of our life. Mm -hmm. One, we need oil for transport. We need oil for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need oil uh, for, for generation of electricity. Mm -hmm. We even need oil for provision of provision of, of water. Yeah. Now, it is not just a question of the taxes that is m m making the price the price high. For example, the fuel development levy, mm -hmm. which is one of the taxes. This this fuel development levy is supposed to go towards the stabilization what? Stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. The stabilization fund is basically to make uh, to sustain uh, or to stabilize the prices yeah. in instances whether where the price is either too low, too high or the price is what mm -hmm. is too low. That is the essence of the that is the essence of the fuel the fuel levy. The fuel okay, levy, yeah. so it is not really the tax that is making the cost of the cost of uh, fuel to be high. It's a question of disproportionalities in the market mm -hmm. based on some of those issues I talked about. Yeah. Uh, uh, cartels in the oil sector holding fuel, take advantage of the consumer. Also, the global factors out there, transport logistics, prevailing market rates out there. Because ideally, you cannot sell fuel or mm -hmm. any commodity for that matter at below cost. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Yeah. yeah. So okay. it is not really the level of taxation. The, tax yeah. taxation. the, the fuel levy is meant to st go into the stabilization fund with a view to stabilizing the prices. In instances where the prices are too high, then there is some direct payoff to the oil consumers, and that is passed on to the mm. con, uh, to the oil producers, uh, to the oil company, marketing companies, and company, that is supposed yeah. to be ideally passed on to the consumer at the pump by way of short prices. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, lower prices. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Th there's a comment from uh, Joyce Jepto in Eldoret. Yes. Uh, he's saying, uh, uh, I, I don't know if, you, if you'd like to, if you to maybe touch on that. Uh, he was asking about. Uh, she was asking about uh, the issue of uh, some of the. Government parastatals. Yes. Uh, in terms of the service delivery. Yes. This is in regards to. Um, uh, there was a circular uh, a notice put out by Caps in terms of the cooking oil, cooking um, cooking oil, yeah, cooking oil. Yes. That that some were not legitimate. Uh, some maybe had some issues. So uh, this is asking. But like, then, what do you think uh, going forward in terms of the? the government uh, parasitals they are to make sure that they are doing the right thing not you to see, wait see, and even it's too late and then you raise an alarm over if, something if yeah. if, the, if those oil products are not supposed to be on our shelves then how did they get there in the first place That's that means there's some there's some an anomaly somewhere mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and if kebs which is supposed to be the standardization entity in the dog, market yeah. mm -hmm. has already said that they are not supposed to be in the shelf how comes they are still on the shelves. That and means there's, and there's, there's lack of enforcement. Yeah. Okay. But how did they get there in the place? That mm -hmm. means there's a missing link somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's somebody sleeping on the what? Mm -hmm. On the job. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, we really expect within the Kenya government, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa governance yeah. framework, yeah. that parastatals are supposed, are expected to execute mm -hmm. their mandate yeah, uh, effectively for the benefit of the Kenyan people. Mm -hmm. If there are parastatals which are not executing their mandate properly, mm -hmm. then those parastatals will actually face sanctions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. This Jackson Steele from Kitale. Uh, yes. Jackson he says, "Thank you so much, Elid." And uh, the, the the question or just a view is raising is on the issue of production. It's, he says, "If you talk about the production of, uh, especially." The Kitale, you know, uh, the basket. Yeah, the, 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 the maize, the maize, maize basket. Maize. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. So the issue was about um, he's saying now when the government, uh, you know, the government of Kenya Kwanza, the Kenya Kwanza government, yeah. put in place the issue of uh, production. Yes. Sorted and then we we produce enough. Yeah. So it's asking about will we will we be able again to go back where we were, whereby after production we are told the the NCBP stores are full. There's no market, you know, for <laughs> because we overproduce or something like that. Because I, I think we experienced that around two years ago, or yes. about a year ago. Yes. By you know, you go to the stores and then there's nowhere you can sell. 
Yes. What you produce. That's, that's why so I it's talked about like what are the plants you see there are two like, issues yeah. here. The, mm -hmm. You look at the supply side, yeah, yeah and, and the also demand. you look at the demand yeah. side. Yeah. You cannot be sorting out the supply side and mm -hmm. you forget about the demand side. You mm -hmm. must also look at the policy framework that would ensure that we have got ready market yeah. for the produce of the farmer. They go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. but, and that's why we are saying we must have a sound policy. What? policy framework in place mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. so i think the issue of uh, supply and demand and demand yes yeah and uh, maybe one uh, more thing maybe if you can touch because i i i believe it falls under the policy and strategy as well yeah we've seen here in here out the issue of uh, drought you know famine in especially the northern part of kenya yeah uh, uh, yesterday during the prayer, uh, the, the, the Thanksgiving prayers, and said as president talks about that, uh, about you know uh, looking at the governors and the counties. On all of us, we put our heads together and try and solve those issues. Uh, we've seen when rain comes. Yes, we have floods. Floods, but we are not areas, harvesting the water. We are not harvesting those water. Yeah, yeah. What do you think from where you sit in terms of the policy and strategy on? Uh, on having a long-term solution. You see, we yeah. have got, within government, under the ambit, within the framework of the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, or mm -hmm. Water and Sanitation, we have got the National Water Harvesting and Storage what? Mm -hmm. Authority. What is the functional mandate of this entity? One, it is supposed to ensure that when we have got excess supply of water, that water is harvested, mm -hmm. there is adequate storage, and this then, the same water is now discharged when we have got instances of what? Mm -hmm. Instances of drought. So ideally, we are not supposed to be complaining about drought if mm -hmm. our planning framework or implementation framework was actually up to the level required. It's basically because of failure, yeah, in the what? Mm -hmm. In our, uh, our, our, our policy interventions. We are supposed to have adequate water storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We are not even supposed to be over relying on rain-fed agriculture. We are actually supposed to optimally exploit our potential using what? Mm -hmm. Irrigation-fed what? Mm -hmm. Agriculture. But we are over relying on rain-fed agriculture because we are not able to harvest the rain and, st and, and store that water and use it in instances of drought. Mm -hmm. So it's basically market failure, if you ask me. So it's an yeah. issue of market failure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Kenya Kwanza government, because when we you talk see, about this famine, you know, it also talks about the loss of life. Yes. Children get mal uh, malnourished, you know, and everything goes at a standstill. Yeah. You see, that gov the government had got an ambitious uh, program mm -hmm. uh, for dams for purposes of uh, storage of water. Yeah. But from where I sit, I think some of those issues were over politicized. Mm -hmm. The issues of the dam were over politicized. If the government went ahead with the programs that they had uh, with respect to uh, storage of water mm -hmm. without introducing extraneous uh, variables like politics into the planning framework. Perhaps we will not be talking about shortage of water today. Mm -hmm. But I'm told from, from, from that, that, that there were arbitrary budgetary cuts yeah, for some of those dams mm -hmm. yeah, which were envisaged in the plan of the Jubilee, Jubilee government because of political considerations. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, we are talking about drought. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Elliot. And uh, before we wind up, um, several guys, you know, say thank you, and uh, they are very quite optimistic. And what would you like to tell them? You know, uh, the parting shot. Yeah, yeah, the parting shot. Well, first of all, guys, uh, hundred days. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. One. Let me thank Kenyans mm -hmm. for breaking the shackle of tribal politics and for the first time uh, since uh, the advent of our multi-party politics mm -hmm. i would say that we have seen a truly issue-based uh, campaign mm -hmm. that informed the election of william ruto as the president uh, of the republic of kenya with that now in place uh, a government now in place led by ruto yeah mm -hmm. All we need now is cooperation and support from all Kenyans, irrespective of how they voted. Yeah. Yeah? We have got one government, yeah? we have got a Kenyan people, and that government is ready to serve all Kenyans, irrespective of their, how they, they, they voted during the last, what, mm -hmm. last elections. Let us give the government the cooperation, the enabling environment that the government requires to enable it to um, implement the promises that it made to the people. Mm -hmm. From where I sit, I can state authoritatively without fear of contradiction that the William Ruto-led government, Kenya Kwanzaa government, will deliver on the promises that it made to the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Okay, so... The will is there. The will is there. The people are there. And the work here is to be done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Eliud, uh, for your time. I know you have a very busy schedule, and we really appreciate you know, for finding time to come and speak to us. Uh, maybe um, the next two weeks again, if you get a, a minute or two, <laughs> yes, you're welcome back so that we'll be able to keep in track, you know, and keep in check on what's new yeah. and every... I'll be ready and available. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Asante. It was Thank indeed you. my pleasure. Karibu tena. Asante. Mm. All right, itafuka nchina. Thank you to Kinuta Nebe Tunata Nebaraini and Olibo Studio Nata Nebakas TV. I'm going to talk to you about this again. I'm going to talk to you about this again. En serikali na tena baki nyaka kwa nsa, en pedu se karani chini mita na ntai, ago karagi mtu daika terterchin, sasa bi tayari kutoa retin en kona isin. Agumi kwa ta Eliud Owalo, na kwa UDA Deputy Secretary General, en kwa vita na tena ba Policy and Strategy, ingalala na kwa ba Bottom Up Economic Agenda, the Plan. Kitu kitu kinu tena bi tuna tena wara ine, kai na njia kwa Stanley Bore.